I have three batteries here. They're all 6S nanotechs and they're all 5,000 milliamp hour packs. And I have a 25C pack, it says 50C max burst discharge. A 45C pack, it says 90C max burst discharge. And then this last one is a 65C with 130C burst discharge. As you get higher in the C uh, rated packs, they get slightly bigger from each other. You can kind of see from the side profile with the 65C pack all the way over here to the right, it is slightly bigger than the other two packs. Something that I've emphasized in my other videos about batteries is the different packs will have a different internal resistance and I happen to have an eye charger here and it does a good job of giving me a quick reference to the internal resistance of this pack. I've got it hooked up to the uh, the breakout board here and I have the uh, measure internal resistance function that's in its special uh, special modes was it special modes uh, function a sub menu I should say and here I have the 45 the, excuse me the 25 C pack and I'll measure the internal resistance and it's doing threes and twos an average about uh, just under three for the um, the individual cell internal resistance and here is a 45C pack and I will do the measure internal resistance and it has twos and uh, a one okay so the higher the C pack the lower the internal resistance which is what we would expect and next I have the 65C pack and I'll measure the internal resistance and I see twos and mostly ones here so the 65 C pack you would expect to have the lowest internal resistance of all three of these packs one thing that I will say about the internal resistance is that when you first get a pack um, you, you should do some easy flights and then progressively start getting harder if you have a uh, charger that allows you to measure the internal resistance, I suggest that you track it and then as you see the internal resistance stabilize, it should be fully broken in. It will go down a little bit during the break-in process and then as it ages or as you abuse it, that internal resistance tends to go up. Another factor is uh, whether it's fully charged or discharged. I find that a fully charged uh, pack, uh, at least around 4 volts or more, will have a slightly lower internal resistance and also temperature. Today is a somewhat cool day. It's in the 60s. Uh, if I were to come out here and it was 40 degrees, the internal resistance would actually go up higher. If it was around 80 degrees, the internal resistance would be about a little bit lower. Keep in mind that measuring the internal resistance, you have to consider not just the charge of the pack or the age of the pack or the sea level, but also is it a warm day, cold day. If you want to get consistency in your internal resistance measurement, you also have to consider the temperature of the pack itself. Another thing is that the uh, individual chargers that you use, some will measure uh, the internal resistance higher than it really is. Um, so when I'm looking at these numbers, I'm comparing pack to pack at the same time and on the same charger. So if you're, even if you're using the same charger, your numbers may vary. That's one of the reasons why manufacturers tend not to specify uh, on their, their sales sheets information about internal resistance because sometimes it can be all over the map but as you can see these are fully charged packs and it's about 60 degrees here and you can see how the the 65 C pack had the lowest internal resistance the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a wattage test I have a 60 sized uh, 400 kV motor and about a 13 inch prop and then a speed controller and then I have a uh, servo tester and a watt meter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the wattage draw of each of these packs under full throttle for the same electrical setup in terms of speed controller prop and motor and we're going to compare what happens with the different size C rated packs on the total wattage 
Now, to, to try to even things out, I have uh, pre-discharged this pack down to four volts. I'm going to test them all with a resting voltage starting at a, a route to 24 volts um, for the pack. That's about four volts per cell. Uh, that way, it'll be a little more uh, in terms of in the flatter part of the discharge curve. Okay, so it's about a uh, 24 and a quarter for the resting voltage, and I'm going to crank up the throttle here. Okay, so after about 10 seconds of run up, it got to about 920 watts. Okay, now I have the 45C pack and it's resting voltage. I'm looking at it here, it's around 4.23 volts. And I'm gonna crank up the throttle here. Okay, after about 10 seconds of run, it was just under 1,000, like around 995, 990, something like that. I have the 65C pack, and it's got a, about a 24.3 volt uh, resting voltage. Uh, 65C pack, same setup here, and I'm going to move up the throttle. Okay, so it ran to about uh, 1,030. Okay, so 1,030 watts. Um, so that pretty much compares the different packs. You can see uh, at the same volt, uh, resting voltage approximately within 0.1 volts, and I ran it for about 10 seconds for each. You can see how the, the uh, three of them compared. So the thing I wanted to emphasize with this particular test is that you can't say that a six cell pack, 5,000 milliamp hours, for example, is going to put out a certain power with a certain motor and prop without taking into consideration the battery internal resistance, which gets lower, lower is better, for a higher C pack. Uh, for each step from 25 to 45 to 65 C, I was looking at basically around a four to six percent increase in total wattage. Uh, for each test. So 4 to 6 percent increase going from 25 to 45 or 45 to 65. And with a total of uh, around 10 percent increase in total output wattage just going from a 25C to a 65C pack. So consider that when you're looking at what, what size uh, pack and, and what C rating. If you're in an airplane it's going to give you more power, especially at the beginning of the flight. It's going to warm up less sorry, it's going to heat up less during flight with a lower internal resistance. And when you're on a helicopter, when you're doing those heavy 3D maneuvers like TikToks, it's going to bog your uh, motor less with a higher CPAC versus a lower CPAC. So far, I've been happy with my uh, Nanotech packs. A um, couple things I'll mention is that uh, no reason to flip out when you get a pack in and you're uh, your cell voltages don't match exactly from cell to cell. In many cases, I've found it that it's actually the charger that does not have the individual cell voltages match. Many of the chargers uh, have a function that allow you to uh, calibrate and add a plus and minus to the individual cell voltages. You can find that out from uh, maybe a, a forum about your charger. Um, but typically, uh, for the, all these packs, I might have seen an error of 0.05 volts per cell. I charged it up. The first charge took maybe a little bit longer than normal to fully balance it. And then the break-in uh, flights ran pretty smooth. They all discharged very well. I'm not going beyond 20% uh, discharge. Uh, so that's one thing that really helps with the, uh, with the lifespan of your, uh, your pack.